it was a realization, a realization that God left me here for a reason, that God gives me these battles to build me up for something greater, that God gives me these battles like a badge of armor. And every time one of these battles come up, I get an extra piece of armor. It's like a fucking video game. That's why I named this podcast, I'm in God mode. Because anyone knows that ever's played a video game, if you're playing a war game or something like that, and you get God mode, you can't die. Welcome to the David Adam Kerr Show. What's going on, everybody? This is David Adam Kurz with the David Adam Kurz Show. I want to take a minute and, man, pour my heart out to you guys today. And I hope that, you know, you guys take this in a very positive way. Um, I'm feeling strength today. I'm feeling tremendous emotion today. Um, it's been creeping up on me little by little. As many of you know, uh, three, four weeks ago, I suffered a heart attack. And I'm going to paint this picture for you real quick. I suffered a heart attack on a Tuesday morning and um, the pain was in my body. I didn't know that I was having a heart attack. So I went on with my day. I took pre-workout. I went to the gym. I went to meetings. I had a drink of alcohol. Like that was my day while suffering a heart attack until that night it got so bad that I elected to go to the hospital. Now, I don't know how many guys out there are super macho. You know, I was in the Marine Corps and it was like, ride or die, you know, suck it up, buttercup. You know, we ignore the pains, work through it, take two aspirin, take two Tylenol, shut the fuck up. Um, and I just went through the day and that night, I just couldn't take it anymore. And now I'm laying in this hospital bed. My wife's on one side, my daughter's in front of me. And I am told that I'm having a heart attack and the entire kind of world didn't settle in right away. It was like somebody said, I'm, I'm bringing you some ice cream, right? Like it didn't really settle in that some specific news was being given to you. And then I'm being treated for a heart attack and the pain is there and the pain is relieving and my blood pressure's up and I'm freaking out. And, and I'm coming out of a test. And as I'm coming out of the test and they're pulling me into the room, I had a, a, a CT scan and pulling me into the room. And, um, and my mom's in the room, my daughters are in the room, some of my closest friends are in the room, my wife's in the room. And the first thought that went through my head, and, and you know, mind you guys, I'm, I'm getting a little emotional here, but the first thought that went through my head is, fuck. Like, everything that we've worked for, everything that we've done, all the love with this family, all the love we've created in the circles that we've created and the tribe that we've created is almost gone. Not only was it almost gone for me, but I almost left a group of people, my family, my girls empty. And I know that their lives would have gone on with time and, you know, they would have grieved and they would have moved on. But the truth is that I don't know. I don't know what comes after death. I don't know if there's some spirit that gets to hang out and, you know, take care of your family, or if you go to heaven and you never see your family again and everything's freaking roses and butterflies and I don't know what the fuck, but all I know is that I would have been ripped away from them and, and, and they would have been ripped away from me and it would not have been what it needed to be. And that stressed me out so much that it threw me into a spiral and threw me in different directions. Now, Listen, this is not the first time that something traumatic has happened in my life. You know, um, I, I could go on and on and tell you stories. I could tell you about, you know, my, my childhood, my upbringing, my time in the Marine Corps, uh, you know, the things that I've suffered, the lawsuits that I've been through, the friends that have fucked me over and stabbed me in the back. Um, and all of that starts to really just flood into you like somebody took a fire hose, shoved it into your mouth and turned the water on. And, 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 and I don't know if people who have been through these, you know, I'm, I'm going to call it a near death experience because honestly, like who knows, right? So I don't know many people have been through a near death experience like this that have experienced that same sentiment that I'm feeling. Maybe people react to things different. Maybe for some people they were like, you know, okay with it. Maybe other people just 
uh, received it differently, but I received it as a flood of everything that has happened in my life, every battle that we have fought, every war that we were in, every fucking sniper attack that we had to go through, every bullet we dodged, every knife we dodged, every knife we had to pull out of my wife and I, like the knives that we had to pull out of each other's backs because of the fucking people in this world that want to see you fail. And all those thoughts flooded into my head and they became hyper vibrant and evident. And it was almost like my brain started to spin in a negative fashion. And I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't that. It was a realization, a realization that God left me here for a reason, that God gives me these battles to build me up for something greater, that God gives me these battles like a badge of armor. And every time one of these battles come up, I get an extra piece of armor. It's like a fucking video game. That's why I named this podcast, I'm in God mode. Because anyone knows that ever's played a video game, if you're playing a war game or something like that, and you get God mode, you can't die. Like you get to run the whole game without being touched. You no, Nothing could touch you. Missiles could go at you. Like nothing could touch you. You can't die in God mode. You have to turn off the, the, the game, pull the fucking plug. Like, as, like you, you die when you stop. I am officially in God mode. Now this has multiple meanings to it. One of the meetings is the one that I just gave you right now. I refuse, refuse to take this heart attack as a message that tells me that I am supposed to slow down. I am in good shape, ladies and gentlemen. I do not have high cholesterol. I did not have any blockages. I wasn't required any stents. I am a lucky motherfucker. And the doctor told me that if I wasn't in the shape that I'm in, the heart attack could have been significantly worse. Why did I have a heart attack? Probably stress. So Dave, slow down. No, Dave, manage stress better. Now, to my friends and my family that have looked me in the face and said, Dave, you got to take care of yourself. You need to slow down. You need to take things off your plate. I love you. And I know that you're telling me this from a place of love. I know that you are thinking to yourself, like, I don't want anything to happen to you, Dave, so please just take a step back and slow down. But I, I want you to understand something about me, and, and I hope that you take this message strong. I don't know how, and I don't want to. These medications that they put me on, they've slowed me down so fucking much that I don't even feel like myself. My wife and I, this last weekend, we flew to Vegas. We went to the Mindset Summit in Vegas, and then we, flew, we, then we flew the very next day to Phoenix, and we went to the Closer Summit with Andy Elliott and Bradley. And we had opportunities to meet amazing people like King Mo and like Sugar Shane Mosley and, you know, spend some time with Pavan from, from Angel Way Art and spend some time with, you know, Coach Bill Pipes, who's a great guy, and, and spend some time with... Uh, with Brad Lee and spent some time with Andy Elliott and Andy's wife, Jackie. And I was not at a hundred percent. I wasn't myself. I was slow. And because I was slow, I had this inability to communicate the way I normally communicate the way I know how I couldn't think quick on my feet. My brain was not on full speed. There was only one time. There was only one time in the, all those days that my brain Turned on like a fucking light bulb and I got into full speed. You know what that day was? You know what happened? What, what put me in full speed? At the Mindset Summit, when it was my time to step on the stage and I was interviewed by Sam Chauhan, the leader of the Mindset Summit, the founder of Mindset Summit, and he handed me a microphone. And that microphone was like every medication on the planet and a Red Bull, all mixed in together, entered my body. And God was with me, and I was able to articulate and pump and give the crowd something back in return. Unfortunately, I wasn't on the stage as long as I would have liked to because I had tremendous energy at that moment. And then as soon as I handed the microphone back and I got off the stage and I said hi to a few people, and a few people asked for my info and stuff, my body went back down again. Now, 
a lot of people will take these messages in different ways. The way that I take this message is God is telling me you need more stages. God is telling me you need to give back to more people. God is telling me you're on the right path. God is telling me your coaching program is fucking amazing. Do that. God is telling me your mission to impact the lives and businesses of a million people in a positive fashion is what we need in this world. God is telling me more people like me need to come to the table. That's the way I feel. That is what's running through my veins right now. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I, man, I can tell you events that I've been through. I can tell you how we went through this crazy lawsuit in 2020 from a former partner who lied like there was no tomorrow in the lawsuit and I couldn't fight it. I wasn't ready. And it took me years and years and years of fighting. And it just came to settlement like this 2024 fucking, it, like, it just came into settlement. And I can tell you about all the people that turned their backs on me in the process of the settlement because they didn't want to be associated with me while in a lawsuit. People that I gave so much to, people that I gave my life to, people that I gave money to, people that I gave love to and turned their backs on me and did something different and just cut me off completely because they didn't want to be involved because they were afraid to step on a state, on a, on a platform and tell the truth. Because they were afraid of the other person. I could tell you about all those times, but does it fucking matter? I've been through the shit. I've been through all kinds of stuff. And if, look, again, to my friends, to my family that want me to slow down, I want to tell you something, man. I did not go through all this shit so I could sit on the couch, get fat, and do nothing. I did not go through all this shit so I could look at my businesses and decide which one of them I want to shut down. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you guys, man. My wife and I came home from the hospital and I got on my whiteboard right here and I wrote down the four pillars of what we do in our business. I wrote down those four pillars and I looked at my wife and I said, which one of these can we cut off? And we sat there for a half hour, 45 minutes discussing and talking and realizing and there was nothing that we felt comfortable shutting down because that's not who we are. There was nothing that I looked at that said, I want to close this. I don't want to do this anymore. Or, you know, this is stressing me out so much that I'm going to get another heart attack. No, none of that stuff was happening. As a matter of fact, when this heart attack hit, I wasn't feeling the stress. I was okay. It just so happens that when you push your body for many, 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 many years, shit happens. And I understand, look, guys, I'm not saying that I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before. I am going to take more care of myself. I'm going to take a little more time off. I'm going to vacation a little bit more. I'm not used to that. I'm going to get a few more massages. I'm going to eat a little healthier. I'm going to take some vitamins. I already bought my superfoods and putting them in my protein shakes. It's been four weeks. I just went back to the gym. I'm taking it easy. The important thing is I'm back in the gym. Am I getting dizzy in the gym? Yes. Is my heart beating faster than normal in the gym? Yes. Is there a reason behind that? Of course. I just had a fucking heart attack and it's been four weeks since I've been in the gym. You take four weeks off the gym and see how you feel on day one. I'm pumped. I'm in God mode. Here's my second definition of God mode. I am more connected than ever before. Nobody can take away that from me. Nobody can take away my connection. Nobody's going to take it away from me. We're going to celebrate God in my house. We're going to do it. And we're going to do it strong. We always have. And we're a proud Jewish family. And we continue to be. And we will be. And we will celebrate it. Passover's coming up. And we're excited about that. To the haters that read my book and talk shit, fuck you. Thank you for talking about me. I am so glad that I'm renting space in your head. To the people that saw my heart attack and imagined that I would slow down, sorry. It's not happening. I can't do it. It's not how I'm built. I apologize to my wife right now because I know that she expected this podcast to come out. I know that she expected these words to come out of my mouth, but I'm sure deep down inside she hoped that I would find a way to slow down. So here's my commitment to my wife. I'm going to say this publicly. I'm not going to slow down, baby girl. I love you, but I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to push harder than ever before, and I'm going to have you and our family and everybody else to support me. 
and I'm going to keep the people close to me because for every one of those people that talk shit about us, we have 10 more people that love us to death, that will support us, that will help us grow. And that's important to me. I need that in my life. And I am going to continue to give back in the way that I do. I do not believe in failure. I wrote this fucking book for a reason, baby girl. I'm sorry. I'm going to continue to push forward, but I will promise you this. I'll take better care of myself. I'll drink less. I'll work out more. I'll get a few more massages. I'll do whatever's necessary to keep my heart in its perfect condition so that I can continue to be here because I made a commitment to you that I would outlive you. And I can't let you down. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have so many things in this world to be blessed about. And I, I'm, I'm, I wanted to make this public because I was feeling it, man. I was feeling it and I was tearing and I was, I'm be honest with you guys, man. I get emotional sometimes and I get angry. And I get angry because I know there's so many reasons, man. But I know for a fact that had I died four weeks ago, my family was not as prepared as I would have liked to have left them. And that means that I need to be here right now doing this shit and building this business and this foundation so that I can create a legacy. So that we can create legacy wealth and legacy habits. So that we can have our children see what we do on a daily basis so that they can create similar habits so that they can push to the next level the way that we do, the way that my wife and I do, the way that my wife loves to see me pumped up and going. I'm not going to change that. Again, to my friends and family who have asked me to slow down, I apologize in advance. I am not going to slow down. All I ask is that you hold me accountable. You see me fucking up on my health, you let me know. Because I know that if I am going to push like this, then I got to double down on taking care of me, that I got to double down on taking care of my relationships, that I got to double down on taking care of my intake, my food intake, the things that I put into my body. I wrote down a few things here that I wanted to say, but you know what? The truth is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've been through so much shit in our lives, and as many of you have, I ask you guys, don't fucking quit. Don't quit on the things that, that you feel are attacking you and you, don't, you can't handle it. There's an old saying that God would only give you what you can handle. There's an old joke that rhymes with that that says, I wish he didn't trust me so much. But he does. He does. And he's giving you things that you can handle. You just need to see the signs and you need to understand what it means to you, not to everybody else, because everybody else is going to tell you things out of defense. The brain works in defense. If it hurts, the brain tells you don't do it. That's why other people who love you as much as your brain loves your body, the people who love you will tell you slow down, relax, stop, stay away from that. Don't touch it. It's hot. Let go. Take down. Step down. You're going to fall. Be careful. But if you fall, you get back up. If it's hot, don't touch it again. Lighten it up. Make it warmer. If it hurts, make it not hurt. If you're fat, get in shape. If you're too skinny, get in shape. If you're unhealthy, get in shape. Get healthy. If you eat shit, stop eating shit. If you spend money on stupidity, stop spending money on stupidity. If you smoke cigarettes, stop fucking smoking cigarettes. If you don't love your family, start loving your family. If you spend too much time away from them, find time for them. The business is the business. We're going to grow this baby. We're going to make this baby happen. But everything else will spin out of control and leave you before you know it. Your health will deteriorate and your family will leave. And I hope that my message and my communication with you guys just takes you to another level of motivation that pushes you to the next level, that makes shit happen in your brain, that makes it turn on, that makes it say, I need to do better. I need to stop being a little bitch, Grant Cardone, right? I need to push harder. I need to make shit happen. As a man, I am the household of uh, the head of the household in my family. I am the leader of my family. I want to push so that they can follow. I want to support them. I want to take care of them. 
We got a big thing going on here. I got a lot of family members in my house. And I love having them around. And I need to make sure that I can continue to support them. And in order for me to do that, I need to go big on my business. Man, let me tell you something. There are people like Elon Musk who slept on their couches when they were already millionaires. Okay? This shit like that, that shit like that, that gets me going. There are people who get sick and recover and come back and go harder. There are people who hear the message differently. I could have had this heart attack and the message could have been, hey, listen, sell everything. Go move to fucking, you know, a, a cheaper place like, you know, Guatemala or fucking Mexico or something like that and live on my military retirement and be done. That could have been the message. And you know what? Maybe I would live in 100 years. I don't know. But would I be happy and would I be comfortable in my own skin? Probably not. I would probably get depressed. I would probably gain weight. I would probably fall apart. Because this is what I'm designed to do. Take you back to the stage. The second that I was on stage, I felt like a fucking superhero. I felt like a superhuman. Not out of vanity. Not out of ego. Out of the ability to give back to the community. And for the community to respond with, wow, that was great. That's awesome. That's this. Hey, can I reconnect with you? Hey, can we talk about this? Hey, you said this. Can you go into it deeper? I want to change lives. When we built the Freedom Organization, we said we were going to change the lives and businesses of over a million people in a positive fashion. That is what we're doing. That is our mission in life. I cannot do that if I slow down. Maybe I get a couple hundred thousand, but it ain't going to be a million. And we said we were going to get a million. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with this message because I hope that you understand that shit will happen, that life happens. And that things will attack you in your life and you deserve, you deserve more. You deserve more. You deserve to be better. You deserve to live up here. You deserve to be in the clouds. You deserve to have a great family. You deserve to have a great spouse. You deserve to have smart and great children. You deserve to have a circle of friends that support you. You deserve that. And if you're not there, change your place. Change your place. Get rid of fucking people and change your place. Make big, big, big decisions. And get super avid about it. And make shit happen for yourself. Until then, until then, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be living in the same shit world. Listen to the messages that are being sent to you. Like I am listening to the message of this heart attack. And for many people, maybe that message is, I need to slow down. I need to take care of myself. I can't do that. I can't do that. I would be depressed. I would fall apart. I need to do what I do on a daily basis. It drives me. It makes me happy. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes your blood flow. Do what makes you feel superhuman. Get in God mode.